Nebraska might be taking a week off, but hell no, we are not. We are not. In fact, Dr. Rob, you may have spent more time in my house over the last two and a half days than you ever have. And it's been delightful. Well, you know why? Because... You uh, have beer? No, no, because every time you walk into our house, it smells awesome. Oh my God, your, your wife yeah. and daughters, why they don't have their own food truck, I don't know. <laughs> you walked in today, and my wife is making a... She usually does a short rib bolognese. Today we were at Costco, and she's Which, like, "By the way, explain what that is to people." It's it, it's an Italian dish with you know it's it, you've got a uh, whole bunch of spices in there and, it, the, and the red sauce. It's it's basically meat and red sauce. It, it it's like a long cooked, slow cooked Italian meat sauce. Yes, correct. Yes, and you serve it over. I mean that you serve over pasta. Yes, I mean this. You know what else we serve it over sometimes? Mashed potatoes. Holy shit, that's Iowa right there. <laughs> Isn't it, though? <laughs> oh, my God. So my, my parents both grew up in Iowa. That's where your wrestling blood came from. By the it way, did. By the way, I got like my phone right here because I'm watching my youngest daughter at a big tournament over in Iowa City. So this has never happened in a Doc Talk podcast before. We may actually have to take like a, a break because Rob <laughs> well, is... Well, we've taken beer breaks. What? We've taken bathroom breaks. Yes. We might have to take a wrestling break Now, here. the interesting part is, and we were just sitting here watching Rob watch his daughter wrestle. He's watching her on the phone. Oh, and I know you thought that when I was watching you play sports growing up that I was a little involved. Do you see where that comes from now? Parents are always involved with, oh. with their kids being yeah, in Rob, sports. Yeah, Rob was getting into it over the phone. Dude, and it's one of those things where I, I remember, like, watching Nebraska football. When, my, when I was done, but my younger brother John was still playing. Yeah. So there was another three years there that he played. He was there 95, 6, and 7 after I was done in 94. Oh my God. I, I mean, it's a personal experience. I mean, it really yeah. is. When you've got a family member playing, you've got a close friend playing, a neighbor, that kind of thing. That personal experience aspect of it is freaking huge, but it's 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 monstrous when it's one of your own kids. And you always want to see your kids do well. You want to see your kids' teams do well. And that's, a, I mean... It, it's kind of weird because there was this little three-year run of Nebraska football that I watched where I, I needed like huge doses of beta blockers and alcohol just to make it through a game <laughs> when John was playing. Really? Because I had that personal family investment in the team. But it's different when he's kids. It's completely different. Yeah, it's, you're personally invested, but because you watch your kids and you want them to do well and you, and you see little tendencies and you start... You know, Owen used oh. to get, and I coached Owen when he was in baseball, and he would get so pissed at me because I would just see little things and I try to correct it, right? And and it drove him up up Pro, a wall. Which you know, and with my kids, so I've had two of our three kids play football. Yeah, two of our three wrestled. Um, was it better watching Brennan swim because you didn't know how to really coach swimming? It. I loved watching swimming, but you for were, that reason, you were going crazy. Oh, and wasn't he? The, it it yeah, was just the, funny the, watching the, him. The, the The swimming thing was interesting because so she was a three or four year swimmer at West Side in high school, four year letter winner, went to state. I think she actually was on the state team all four years. Um, then went to Florida State and rowed at Florida State for four yeah, years. Yeah, but when you go watch a row, you're not going to go. Row harder. <laughs> no, but you would get fired up. So her junior year at Florida State, the, I think they finished fourth in, at nationals. So, that I mean, it was a great season. Every time that they had – that they were at a regatta, a tournament, a head event, anything like that, you're on the live stream watching this. And you're, and it's like any of these other events where you're like, you're kind of, you're, you're like moving in the direction they're moving, trying to get them to move faster in that direction. And it's, it, it's, ah, oh, it I, I mean, it was, it was brutal watching her with rowing in college. Cause you're sitting there and you're, you're like, 
God damn those sons of bitches from Vanderbilt. It's like, just <laughs> screw those nerds. But, but, but the difference is, and, and I, I was giving you a hard time because I said, the Iowa blood is coming out of you. You're from Iowa. And there's something about being from the state of Iowa. You grow up with wrestling, right? I mean, it is in your blood. I, I wrestled up until I was in sixth, seventh grade. And then you wussed out. No, I had to choose between basketball and, and wrestling. And the truth is that uh, wrestling was way too hard. I, I, I chose the easy That's route. That's what I just said. You yeah. wussed out. Yeah, I, I really did. But... Wrestling is one of those sports when you watch, you start, you, you're you so involved. You, you it, it, More than football, more than baseball, because it's nonstop action, and you just, you you talk all and the time is, during it. And it's non, it, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's yeah, a great sport. I don't sport. know what it is. There's something about wrestling that's, what's weird is, is honestly, I, I look at our three kids, and the one that I look at and think, damn, would have been a good wrestler. Our oldest daughter, who yeah. was a swimmer and then rode all through college. And it's, it's not like you look at somebody who is a college athlete and, and you're like, yeah, they should have done another sport. Yeah. Um, But girls wrestling but, really yeah. wasn't around then. Um, you now, had it. It was kind yeah. of this low-key... People looked at you cult, when you did it. Low-key cult level thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, now it's mainstream. In fact, I, you yeah. can make the argument that that girls and women have brought new light to the sport of mm. wrestling. Big time. I mean, there was a couple, several people who follow the sport, several media members within the wrestling world made the comment that girls wrestling, women's wrestling is going to probably end up saving wrestling on the whole because it's going to literally double the viewing audience, well, the, the 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 parents, the family members, the the, the involvement in it is going to doubles. And, and the irony of the whole thing, and, and people who grew up in the seventies and eighties, when Title IX cuts needed to be made, Title IX itself almost decimated college wrestling. It did, and that's that's the thing. I mean, it really brutalized wrestling. It did, and it's what's interesting now is you see a lot of with the conference realignment. What's funny is you look at some of these schools that did drop wrestling coming back into conferences where wrestling's a strong conference entity. I mean, you look at the, the Big 12 has very good wrestling. The Big 10 has very good wrestling. No, the Big 10 has excellent wrestling. It's like volleyball. Yeah. It has outstanding yes. wrestling. And so, I mean, I mean, Nebraska is a perennial top five to top ten team nationally for men's wrestling. But the difference between one, and, and two, and, and five like, is completely like, different. They're like fourth in the Big Ten, yes. and they're like fifth <laughs> nationally. It's But that's like volleyball. I yeah. mean, volleyball, Nebraska can finish second or third in the Big Ten, which means they're going to be second or third nationally. Yes. It's just the way it works out, as strong as that conference is in that particular sport. So at some point during this podcast, we may pause. You may not even know. You will probably more on YouTube uh, than you would on the on the audio podcast. And speaking of YouTube, if you haven't taken the time to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please, please do so. Uh, this podcast will be up there. The Doc's Diagnosis is up there. Uh, Friday, we did a live call-in show after the Illinois game. So we're not really going to recap the Illinois game in this podcast because we've already done that. In fact, we did it for about an hour and a half, and that podcast is up there. I do want to say this. Uh, that podcast is up there for some reason, and maybe because it's not Nebraska football-driven. I, I need to reiterate – and, and I'm not begging for listens and views. Okay, I ain't too proud to beg. You need to go watch and listen to the Joe Moglia interview. Uh, it was a podcast we did in the middle of last week. We threw it up there. Um, it's not getting the same amount of listens and views as our other podcast. And I'm telling you, it is so, so good. The thing that's interesting about it is that when we have Joe on, the people who do listen consistently say it's probably like, I mean, in terms of just information, the quality of the podcast, the stuff we're talking about, people, everybody always says that that that's like your best three podcasts ever. Yeah. And I don't know if I agree. I, I mean, I thought the Aaron Graham one was good. I, I It's hard for me the to Aaron really. The Aaron Graham one was an outstanding yeah. one, which honestly, 
a lot of the interviews we've done have been you know amazing why people podcasts. let their guard down in here. They, yeah. they they really do. There's something about the basement. People let their guard down in here, and they're open and on. Joe was very open, very honest. He doesn't hold back. That's why I hope one day Matt Rule will sit in that chair. I really do. I think he would have a blast that would up be here. Interesting. I, I, I and we're still going to try to make it happen. Um, but, which I mean, you make the point. I mean, if you get a chance to go back and listen to some of these interviews, yeah. Doug Ewald was an outstanding yeah. interview. Steve Swanstrom. Yes. Centris Federal Credit Union. Yes. If you want a very, very good discussion on leadership within the corporate world, go listen to the Steve Swanstrom podcast yeah. interview that we did. I mean, God, that was over a year ago. Yeah, that might have been audio only. And I think that was one of the live ones that we had at uh, at uh, Cross Train. No, we had him in here. We did, didn't we? He's been on yeah. a couple times. Yeah. Well, and he has. And it's. It's interesting because the information he's got is just absolutely outstanding. That was a great one. Oh, God, I feel horrible. I'm blanking on his name. Uh, hey, Strohmeyer the, from Iowa Western. Strohmeyer was an outstanding podcast. That was a really good – if you want – from a college football, recruiting, JUCO slash small, small school football – the information that Strohmeyer had, that was freaking interesting as all hell. The soil turf science professor from oh, Penn, Penn State, State yes. who's from Nebraska, yeah. in terms of, if you're one of these people who's remotely interested in, well, who, what are you going to blow your knee on? Is it going to be artificial turf or is it going to be natural grass and which is better to play on? Oh my God, that was an interesting podcast. But I get into, I'm a nerd. I get so, into that stuff. So, what we're saying is with the bye week, it's a good time to go back in go time back and, listen. and listen to some of these. So, you can find them on the audio version, uh, the the YouTube version. Uh, did we do the YouTube last year, Owen, or was it just you, this year? I'm trying to think when we started our YouTube channel. We, we, we did uh, YouTube versions uh, last starting last season. Okay. Um, but a lot, we did a lot of interviews at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll, and we'll pick up the interviews when the season is over because um, during the season it's hard. I tried to get somebody in today. They and it was short notice. It, it, I, I didn't get it worked out, but we're we're going to start doing more interviews starting in January, and those are a lot of fun because people let their guard down. They have a little beer and uh, they they talk freely. Speaking of beer, uh, we've been getting a lot of shipments lately. Uh, again, so which by the way, I did earlier. Yeah. A little shout out to Matt Pinkerton. So yeah. Matt hooked us up with some stuff from uh, Boss City in Sydney. Yeah. I killed the last of the Boss City today. I drank the Oktoberfest. Excellent Oct that that so I'm not an Oktoberfest guy. It's not a pumpkin beer. I kind of slide it in. It's it's sort of close to that pumpkin beer because too many people, they're Oktoberfests. It's like basically they take fermented burnt marshmallows and brew a beer out of it and call it an Oktoberfest. Not my cup of tea. Boss City crushed it. That was a great Oktoberfest, by the way. I'm drinking our buddy Craig down in Atlanta, who always makes a, a beer shipment. I think he skipped us this time. I think he was pissed because we didn't drink this beer fast enough. Because I think he was up this here is, recently. This has been in your fridge for like only two weeks, dude. It, no, it's been there a little bit longer. This but, is in the box in the fridge. Yeah, but I'm drinking the Juice Raptor, which is a hazy IPA. That's from Monday Night Brewing down in Atlanta. Which we we love Monday Night Brewing, by the way. We, we drink a lot. Courtesy of Craig. Yeah. We drink a lot of Monday Night Brewing, which I got the, you got the Juice Raptor? Yeah. I've got the Death Raptor. See that's like that's that's an October beer because it's Halloween time. It Death. says it's a killer IPA, which all I'm going to say is my beer would kick your beer's ass. It, it probably does. And Just I'm going to move on. Cody down in Arkansas, he's in the horse racing business. And Cody, by the way, huge thank, huge thanks to Craig, huge thanks to Cody. Yeah. Anytime they come back up to Nebraska, I feel like they bring beer. They do. They do. Uh, and and it's always great stuff. And I'm going to move on after the Juice Raptor to a Cody beer, which is the Lost 40 Brewing Company, which is a Mexican-style lager, the Easy Tiger. And Lost 40 puts out a lot of really good beers. So we've had, God, we've had Western Nebraska beers, uh, Arkansas beers. I know we have some Utah beer coming. Oh. Yeah. Somebody wrote the other day they're going to they're send some Utah beer. Hold on a second. Yeah. They make alcohol? 
in Utah. Well, you know, believe it or not, the Mormons say they don't drink. I don't believe it. I've always heard when the Mormons go to Canada, that it's like, uh, oh, we're not we're not in you know the United States anymore, so we'll drink we'll drink beer. Wait, why do Mormons go to Canada <laughs> so they can drink? Like they can't drink if yeah. they're in the U.S. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, they'll sense us if yeah. we're we're only in Montana. Yeah, multiple wives and girlfriends. That's not a problem. You, you go to, you go to Canada to drink. Sorry, that's supposed to be a joke. If you're Mormon, don't get mad at me. Okay. Why do you hate God? I don't hate God. I mean, things we have established. I just don't believe God pod- showed up in Missouri. <laughs> I think it was actually Illinois. Was it Illinois? That okay. was Illinois. Okay. I think, You're I talking think about the, Joseph Smith? Yes. I think the Garden of Eden's in Missouri. Is, is that where the Garden of Eden is, is Missouri? <laughs> I think so. And, and Owen, where did we learn this? Where, where did you learn that? The internet? No. South Park. <laughs> yeah, South Park had a good episode I thought it was somewhere that. around the confluence of the Tigris and Euphrates <laughs> rivers. Um, oh. Which... God, okay, things we've established on this podcast. Wrestling's awesome. Wrestling's awesome. Beer is good. Beer is good. Travis hates Jesus. <laughs> Do not hate Can't Jesus. Can't stand, he, the guy cannot stand God. <laughs> in, well, Jesus and God are the same thing, if you believe in the Trinity. Yeah, we'll throw the Holy Spirit in there too. <laughs> Travis hates the Holy Spirit. <laughs> There you go. For there the you love go. of all that is holy, <laughs> literal. <laughs> oh, uh, good, you know we good, just made good, somebody mad, right? We made good, somebody mad. Good Catholic that you are. Y- y- you know it. You know it. I try to be. Trav won't eat meat on Fridays, but he hates God. I eat meat on Fridays. I do. Says the Catholic. Except for 40 days during Lent. Like you give up? Okay, serious question. You give up meat during Lent uh, on I, Fridays? I try to, but there's so many no. times. Uh, thanks, Owen. <laughs> 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 I, I I try to be good, but then you just have a medium rare to rare plus steak looking at you, and all I hear is God telling me, "Oh, I'm going to." You should eat that. that. God yeah. tells me I should eat that piece of meat. There is a reason God accepted Abel's offering and not Cain's. <laughs> of course, then Cain killed Abel. Yeah, but I'm just true. saying. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going <laughs> next, but it, it, it involves steak. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't go wrong with good steak, right? I mean, Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. Now, we got lamb cooking upstairs, which I'm anxious to eat some lamb today, too. Yeah. And you watch, you'll stick around just to have a little bit of life. I might eat some baby sheep. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I don't care how cute they are. I will eat uh, that. How many people have we offended on this podcast in the first uh, 18 minutes? Oh, my gosh. Quite a few? Probably a few. Uh, it is the bye week for Nebraska. And I guess the big question, Rob, is there can any, you're six games through the season now. And I said this on the Iowa post game show last night because I host that, and people were all upset about the offense. I said, "Listen, you're six games in. It the, is the Iowa offense. Yeah, yeah the Iowa offense." I okay, said, I, I said, "Like, is that anything new, though?" No, but I'm going to translate this to Nebraska. It is what it is. You're now at the point where it is what it is is, is true. You're six games in. I don't think you're going to see major improvements in any area in the last six games. If you have a bye week or not, it is what it is. Nebraska at this point. or Iowa, both. Anybody, both. any team at this point. Um, I could actually, you know, I I disagree on that regard because I think with Nebraska, okay, so with Iowa, you've got an established team with an established coaching staff. True. Looking at the, you, you've got a backup quarterback, and you got a guy who was he on the team last year? Uh, no, he was a transfer portal guy from uh, from Wisconsin. Okay, I, I mean, I would hope to see. And with, you're talking about Deacon Hill, by the way. Yes, I mean, and it was Cade McNamara. So Cade Ma- McNamara, McNamara was the, he's out for the year. Yes. Um, Petrus is. What coaching high school football? No, now? He, he's he's wearing an, he, he's on the si- Iowa sideline. It's funny. There were actually people who called the show last night saying, "Why not?" Just- technically, doesn't he still have eligibility? Yeah, as a year of eligibility, like people were like, "I go, what world are we living in?" Nobody could stand the guy for three years, and now they're like, "Well, maybe Spencer Petrus can come back." Yeah, but or get Padilla. I, okay, 
Let or me, technically, as it's pronounced, Padilla. Uh, it, well, it's Joey Labus who's the number three. Uh, Padilla's not even there anymore. I know. That's my point. I, I guess. I mean, he's gone. Well, I mean, you've got Petrus on the sideline. You had the – who's the guy that transferred? We started – You just Beacon met, Hill. No, the other guy that transferred out of Iowa. Oh, Padilla. Labus is the number three. Labus started Wasn't the – Wasn't there another kid who transferred? Oh, I, I don't even remember. I mean, when you're that far down in the depth chart, I don't even care at that point. Damn. I don't. Now, you I ought get, to care because Iowa could use that guy right I now. I guess, and I don't want people to interpret this the wrong way. I still think Nebraska is going to win six, seven. Hell, they could even get to eight wins based on the schedule that they have left. Okay. Because you well, got Northwestern. Purdue is not any good. I watched Purdue yesterday at Michigan State. You get Maryland, that's an interesting game, at Wisconsin and Iowa. So when I look at the schedule, so I'm a little worried here, so I worry about Northwestern. They, they, they beat Howard by two yesterday. Yeah. Because Minnesota sucks. Minnesota got yeah. drilled by Michigan yesterday. That's okay, why, but Michigan drills everybody. I, I'm just saying. Michigan the, beat Minnesota by one more touchdown ne- than they beat Nebraska. Nebraska would beat Minnesota today and probably beat them yes. by 10 or more. Okay, so here's a good question. Why? Because I think they've come into their own. They're starting because to, they're starting Harburg and they're not turning the ball over it, much. It, exactly, and and that's that was a point of contention on our show Friday night after the game. And we actually have a question. I'm going to see who it's from. Um, it's from Aaron. Aaron says, "You know, I messaged the other night right on the reaction show, which was great, by the way. Thank you for listening, and you can go watch it." about the Sims and Heinrich Harburg situation. Both mentioned Sims turnovers. However, Heinrich Harburg is Which not I, doing much better, plus he isn't accurate. But he's winning. The three wins are with Heinrich Harburg. He's winning, and he's not turning the ball over. I, You know, there was a while there, probably up until, honestly, a week to a week and a half ago, I was still sitting here going, okay, God, it, it's like Sims is the guy who has that ability, like he did against Colorado, Gets a seam, busts a run for 70 yards and a touchdown. That's Sims. Harburg's close to that. And if you and watch the Doc's a, diagnosis from, from this week. purely a running ability. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the Doc's diagnosis this week, uh, presented by Centris Federal Credit Union, you'll see we you diagram up a play, which is the, the read option. He, Jeff Sims wouldn't have done any better. He would have done the same thing that Heinrich Harburg did. Yeah, I, I'm not sure... That his running ability eclipses the turnovers. I don't I, think it does. I don't think it does. I think those turnovers were so damaging. Now, here's the thing. I love Sims as an athlete. I don't think he'd make that move. But, I mean, a lot of people – so we had a, there was a little bit of a Twitter discussion we had online today about, hey, get Sims on the field somewhere as a running back, and several people made the point that, hey, you got a guy who's 6'3". Guess what? Eric Dickerson was 6'3". Lawrence Phillips was almost 6'3". You've, got, you've had tall running backs before. The fact that the guy is 6'3", 6'4", 225 pounds shouldn't exclude him from being a running back. And I'm looking at that and going, okay, that's what I would love to see. Let's get Sims out there, put, line him up as a running back with Harburg at quarterback, and let's see what happens because I think it would be really interesting and I think it would be good. Now, the as soon as I say that, I kind of had to rein myself in a little bit. Because you then start looking at how thin Nebraska is across the board at all positions, including quarterback. There's no depth there. If Heinrich Harbour, okay, let's say you put Sims in at running back. We've already lost two guys at running back this year. What happens if we put Sims in at running back, even for 10 plays a game? What if he gets hurt? What if two weeks later Heinrich Harburg gets hurt? You got uh, Chubba. Do you want Chubba and no running backs? Who do you go with then? What are you going to do? I got to be honest. If I'm the coaching staff, I'm sitting here going, shit, we want to get Sims on the field, but God damn it, if Harburg gets hurt, Sims is all we've got. At quarterback and running back, essentially. Yeah. They, I, I mean – I really think they're looking at this situation going, we're so thin, we can't put Sims out there. We got to kind of keep him as sort of our 
keep him in the back back pocket is the guy that you you play in case Harbor gets hurt. I guess what I'm saying is, you you hear everybody and 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 like this t- Nebraska is getting better. I'm not denying that. But you're going to get better against teams in a really bad West Division. We're going to cover the West Division a little bit. I, I just think at this point, Nebraska is what it is, much like Iowa is, much like Wisconsin is. And, and I don't know if they're after six games, you're going to see drastic improvement. You can make little improvements, which is good. Yeah. It, but the team is what it is. And I think, and I'll share this story. Nebraska is what, three and three right now? Yeah. Okay. I was five and one. Going to Wisconsin this weekend to play the Badgers. The winner of that game is in the driver's seat of the West Division. And Iowa fans are upset. They're upset. And I think the reason they're upset being 5-1 is the realization that it doesn't matter. You can win the West Division. The East is so good that you know the distance between what great is and where you're at right now. Right? So here's my question. Iowa fans are upset about that? Yes. They're upset. That's never bugged them before, in, in well, my opinion. Well, I think I think because uh, I think previous Iowa teams have been better than this one, and they know. I would give you that. I mean, this is. I mean, Iowa is the best of a horrendous di- division. I well, mean, I think Wisconsin right now is the best. I do. I, I think Wisconsin's the best team in the West. We'll find gonna, out this weekend. God, it's going to be interesting to see how that game plays yeah, out. It's going to be an interesting game. I was not afraid once in a while when it's a true rivalry game. And when I say that, I'm talking Wisconsin. I'm talking Minnesota. And Nebraska. Listen, we're, and we're going to talk about the future schedules. Nebraska's played only one team five I, times, and that's Iowa. That's yeah, a protected well, rivalry. That, yeah, that's for Nebraska. That's not for Iowa. Okay. I guarantee if you're Iowa, the Iowa fans and the Iowa players, you care way more about Wisconsin and Minnesota than you do Nebraska. It's like Nebraska, Oklahoma. Yeah. You go talk to, like, that's just based on history, though. I talked to the Oklahoma players that I played against in college. And they always said, they said, rivalry number one was Texas. Rivalry 1B, like 1A was Texas, 1B was Oklahoma State, then it was Nebraska. Red River, then Bedlam, then Nebraska. And, only, and if you talk to Nebraska fan, Nebraska fans are like, oh yeah, Oklahoma's And that's the rival. reason Oklahoma's going to the SEC, to protect that rivalry with Texas. They they sacrifice Bedlam to stay with Texas and go to the SEC. Yeah, Red River was a bigger deal yes. than Bedlam. Yes, and I'll it, give you that. I mean, here's the other reason they're going to the SEC: money, cash, and stability. Yeah, which is why Nebraska went to the Big Ten, and it was cash athletically, it was cash academically, and it was long term stability. And I mean, if you're a Nebraska fan and you're looking at the landscape of college football right now, you're excited. You are so ecstatic that we are in the Big Ten. Anyway, we're, we're tangenting here. I no, I, I agree with you on the Big Ten and the state of the Big Ten. Looking at the schedule, Northwestern definitely a winnable game for Nebraska. Guess what? That's a losable game. We lost that damn game in Ireland last year. Be- because I'm, of poor coaching. The yeah, onside kick is – it's kind of like it's not I as bad. Get it. It's but, not as bad as Cristobal not taking a knee in Miami yesterday. Oh, my yesterday. God, that was mind-blowing. Anyway, that's a whole nother segment. Um, Northwestern, winnable game. That's a losable game. Purdue. Winnable game, losable game. It's winnable, it's losable. Michigan State, same thing. Mar- uh, Maryland did solid. I think they yeah. just ran out. They ran out of horses against Ohio State. They hung in there. That was two and a half quarters of outstanding football that Maryland played against Ohio State. At some point, overall talent, depth. Ohio State just has dudes they just kept throwing at, yeah. at Maryland, and eventually Maryland broke, which, by the way, Scott Spritzer called that one. He did. I mean, it's that was one of those games. Middle of the third quarter, I'm sitting there going like, oh my God, it's the first time ever. Scott was wrong. Ten minutes later, oh my God, 
Scott was right. You, you were texting me during the game going, Scott did a pretty good job. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, we're talking and about – I was thinking more of the Texas Oklahoma yeah. one that, but, but, but that. But so. remember, we talk about the stuff you need to watch. Behind the Point Spread is one of those shows that we do on Wednesday night that you, you have to just watch because Dude, it's people, a good show. Still to this day, I will, sw- I, I will go to my – I will die on the hill. It's the best college football podcast, YouTube show, whatever out there right now. And it's brought to you by Betfred Sports. Speaking of Betfred Sports, I am 7-0 and now on the Betfred Sports app for college football. I don't bet every week. I look for value. I went 2-0 and yesterday. Uh, what games did you bet? I, I took Iowa uh, minus 2.5 and, and I took Iowa State plus 6.5. So Iowa State beat TCU last night. TCU turned the ball over four times. I was sweating the Iowa game out. God, TCU is so bad this year. Yeah, it's it's and it's interesting to, to see what they're going through. Now, there's a little bit of a rebuild there. Um, they did lose a lot. They, they lost some that. guys. But I went 2-0 and yesterday, and the great thing is it's the if you live in eastern Nebraska, you just drive across the border, you download the app, go you load it up with some club. money. You're good to go. I was actually in Des Moines yesterday, so I wasn't at a strip <laughs> club. Uh, but thanks for pointing that out. New customers can get more than $1,000 in bonuses. Bet Fred is the bonus king. Terms and conditions do apply. you got to be 21+. plus. Wagers only accepted in the states where Bet Fred is doing business. And you can find those at BetFredSports.com. And if you do have a gambling problem, I don't because I'm 7-0. and Call 1-800-BETS. Uh, Just because you win doesn't mean it's a problem. That's like, that's like <laughs> saying I drink a lot, yeah. but I'm a functional alcoholic. You're not, you're not an alcoholic, though. Yeah, I can quit any time I want. Anyway, let's look at that schedule again. Okay. So when you go back and look at that, yeah, you got Northwestern, Purdue, Michigan State, Maryland. No, I'm stopping right there because those are the three games that I think fans are looking at and going, okay, those are the three wins we got to get to get. Because two of them are at home. To get to six wins. Nah, Iowa's beatable. (sighs) Iowa's beatable. Okay. And I'm saying that as a Hawkeye fan. Iowa's beatable. So I'm looking at it for, okay, so here's my take. I think those are the three that if Nebraska gets to six, they've got to win. Okay. Maryland, oh my. Maryland's a. I think they are a very good. The thing is, if you win those three, the ball's Mar- rolling. Your, your yeah, confidence level. I it, get it. I think Maryland. I was going to say they're a very good football team. They are a solid football team with the ability to hang in there with a lot of teams outside of that upper tier, like Michigan, Ohio State, etc. Um, Wisconsin. You you said you thought Wisconsin maybe has the edge over Iowa. Well, just because it's in Madison. So, Wisconsin, but I, and I don't think they're a bad team. I think they've got talent. That's a team that definitely can beat you. And, and like you said, it's an away game for Nebraska. Yeah. And then you got Iowa at home. And the thing that worries me is I, I look at Nebraska versus Iowa last year. Remove the fact that it was in Iowa City. Nebraska had. In my in my opinion, with with, with Casey Thompson, a, a pretty solid quarterback. Yeah, he was reasonably healthy at the time, and he had an amazing wide receiver to throw to. That Nebraska had a deep threat at the time. They we really don't right now, and Nebraska exploited that. Iowa had was it five turnovers last it, year? It was quite a few. I don't know if it was five, but it, it, there was it was, it was four uncharacter- or five. Yeah, it was uncharacteristic. It was not a classic Iowa game. And by the end of that game, with Nebraska playing well, experienced quarterback, deep threat at wide receiver, who's now tearing it up in the NFL. That was a one score game. Iowa just ran out I, of time. I, my, and, Nebraska, and, and Nebraska had all those Iowa turnovers to lean on. And it was and Iowa still almost tied that up near the end of the game. It's so I'm looking at this and I'm going, God, we don't have God, we don't have that deep threat at wide receiver this year. We've got an inexperienced kid. I mean, Matt Rule made the coach. He's like, hey, I'm going to take Harburg, and I'm going to coach him as hard as I've ever coached anybody going forward, which tells me Harburg's the starting quarterback here on out. I'm with you. Sims is not going to start at quarterback again unless Harburg has, A, a massive failing somewhere, or B, gets injured. 
And, and actually, I think that's a good thing. You've got to have a guy who doesn't turn the ball over. And for the most part, he doesn't. I mean, you've got a couple, but that's it. Just play smart. Yeah. Makes good decisions. He does. He's he's not as good a runner as Sims, but he's a pretty damn good runner. You don't have to be a great passer. I know people want the down-the-field threat. Hey, you just mentioned it. But the, you need the, somebody who can catch that, and Nebraska doesn't have that either. I mean, Fedoni's the best option to catch the football right now. Yeah, Mar- we got to find out what's going on with Marcus Washington. I think Marcus Washington is their best pass catching threat. And he went out with an injury in that game and didn't come back in. So that that that's kind of the guy that I look at is if we can get Marcus Washington back, I think we're okay. But again, we don't have the deep threat we had last year. We don't have the the, the deep threat we had the year before with Samari Torre, even. It's so it, it's there's some things there that I look at the the Northwestern game, the Purdue game, the Michigan State game, and the Iowa game that I'm sitting here and going, none of those four games are guarantees. So it, it it's not like I mean everybody plays the game where you look at the schedule and go, okay. That's a win, that's a win, and that's a win. And these these others are 50-50, and we're definitely losing these three. You can't look at what's left and say that's a definite win. You don't have that right now. You could go 6-0. and You could go 0-6. You really could. I don't think that they're not going 6-0. I don't know about the 6-0. I, I look at this, and in my mind, outstanding would be they go 3-3. and if they go three and three, finish the year six and six, yeah. I'm looking at this and going, okay, we got a good guy who's got something he can build upon, and I like where we're going right now. Hey, if you need legal help, make sure to give Connor Orr a call today at 402-408-6488. Connor is at the law firm of Orr and Horrigan. He's a friend of the podcast, licensed sports agent in the state of Nebraska, and he works directly with athletes and businesses to help them navigate the ever-changing landscape of name, image, and likeness. And if you need uh, legal advice, he's also focused on corporate and personal injury litigations in both Nebraska and Iowa. He can work with you and with your business as well on, on business planning, estate planning, and real estate transactions. So call Connor today, 402-408-6488. How bad, and I said this last night on the Colin show that I was on, the West Division of the Big Ten of the Power Five and the SECs and the ACC is the only other one with divisions. Is the worst in is is the worst. It's the it's absolute bad. worst. It's pretty bad. Which is amazing when you look at divisions and you see that shift in power over time. It's amazing how strong the East Division has been and has stayed that strong. Yeah. Well, think about it. you got three teams in the East Division that are in the top six of college football right now. Yeah. Which. I mean, in some of that, it, it, it's interesting because you look at how everybody preaches SEC football. God, right now, Big Ten. I'm going to go out on a limb, Rob. the teams that are going to be in the Big Ten, it's pretty impressive. I'm going to go out on a limb. Big Ten wins a national title this year. You think it's Michigan? I do. I do. The consistency has been Watching who get beat at Penn State, but I think Michigan's really good. Yeah, but if, if Penn State wins that game, all of a sudden everybody's going to be sitting here going like, all right, Penn State's then going to win the national title. I, I, I think of the three, I think Penn State's the worst of the three. Not, but they have to Really? Pull, I do. I think Ohio State's better than Penn State. I think Ohio State has the better athletes. I, that's not always the, the winning formula, though. I mean, I, I would, if you want just a, for the people of my era, if you want a quick comparison, every Colorado team I played against had better athletes. Far better athletes. I mean, they they were just an NFL factory. I mean, it was just a machine with the athletes that those teams had. Nebraska would routinely have four to six, five to seven NFL draft picks a year, which is <laughs> kind of funny you say that now and you're like Wow, if we get like one or two, we're pretty excited. <laughs> pretty happy. Yeah, well, look at the years if, you didn't have any draft picks. Yeah, back then, if we had like only four NFL draft picks, you were like, well, that was kind of a downer yeah. year for the for NFL draft picks. Um, 
But every year, Colorado would send like 10 dudes to the NFL. I mean, they were like Ohio State, old school Miami. It, it just they, they would just churn out NFL guys left and right. They were by far the more talented teams. We always beat them. Because you were, you were more disciplined. You were better coached. We were a better team. But is James Franklin a better coach than, than Day? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I... But see, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I, I actually... I, I've been a little bit of a fan of both guys in terms of how they coach. That doesn't mean I like both guys. I'm just saying I think they're both very good coaches. I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it's weird to say that Jim Harbaugh is the more likable guy of Ryan Day and and James Franklin. It really is, but the again, I go back to that COVID year where Harbaugh... Well, he it, almost got fired. I get it. The dude, he shut the hell up. And he started coaching. But think about what we're doing here. We're, we're or, focusing or, on the East when the segment is supposed to be how bad is the West. It's so bad we who, don't even want to talk about who it. Who cares? I, it, that's really what it is. <laughs> who yeah. cares? Who cares about the West? I mean, in terms of the big picture, it's kind of meaningless. Other than Nebraska fans want to see Nebraska get better. Iowa fans want to see Iowa win the Big Ten West. And actually, Iowa, I mean, you and I talked about it. They could win the West. Yes, but they're not going to win the Big Ten title game. Nobody no. who wins the West is going no, to win the Big Ten title not game. Not going to happen. No. And so it's just that's how bad the West is. It is really bad football. And which and you saw an example of that Friday night with Nebraska and Illinois. Oh. And it's not like and it's not like either of those two teams. I mean, that's mid, that that's those are two mid tier teams. In a really bad division. And I think that's why you said after the game, you almost felt dirty after the game, right? I mean, you had this weird feeling oh. because because you watched the Illinois game. and You're I don't happier think, one. Don't y- get yes. me wrong. Never apologize for a loss. I will t- ever. Well, you can apologize for a win. Uh, I mean, a win. Never yeah. apologize for a win. Never ap- Like, I'll take any win. Wow, that was just... Oh, geez, that was sloppy football yes. on both sides of the ball. I mean, Nebraska scores, what, two touchdowns in, what, a matter of 10 seconds or something like that? I mean, it's a, it's a 20 to 7 game, but it's just. It and, was, well, and a few people made the point they're like, God, Nebraska cleans up a few things. And all of a sudden, that's that's like a 34 to. Was, what was the final? Uh, 20, 20 to, to 7. 10, 20 to 7. Nebraska cleans up a few things, and that all of a sudden, that's like a. Th- that's like a thirty-seven to seven. Okay, win. but and and I got this last night because people started saying, "Well, if this would have happened, this would have." But you know what? It didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. And, and you can't go back in time to go. Well, ifs and buts, because ifs and buts were candy and nuts every day would be Christmas. Yeah, I and mean, that's the truth. Yeah, it's you got to you got to live with what you got. And then Nebraska won the game. The ball bounced their way a handful of times, which I, I'm one of those guys that's always kind of believed. Hey, you know. If you're a good team, you will make your own lucky breaks. And I think Nebraska's getting better in a number of areas. They've got a lot of stuff they got to shore up. Specifically? I mean, well, penalties, that was a big yeah. one. What did they have, five in the first quarter? Yeah. A lot of, and, and it wasn't a lot of yards, but just illegal. You were saying, like you said, you played four years at Nebraska and you had, what, three or f- five illegal procedure? I bet, I, aver- I bet I averaged one a year. So you had like four total. And I probably had... Teddy Prohaska had two in like the first 10 minutes. Yeah, and I probably had a couple of holding penalties my first two years, I guess. But that is that coaching? You just didn't or, have much after that's that. That's coaching. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's a culture within a program. I'm going to call it that. Yeah. And it's that's hard to change. I mean, Osborne had this culture of not making those kinds of mistakes. I mean, when you saw those kinds of mistakes, it was kind of an anomaly. And if you, so kind of one of the things that I've really harped on over the last few years penalties, turnover, special teams, miscues. Somebody pointed out that currently Nebraska has the same number of wins in one year under Matt Rule that Matt Rule had in year one at Temple and Baylor combined. He's got three wins. Yeah. That's what he, he he was 
I think two and ten at Temple in year one, and one and eleven at Baylor at year one. He's got three wins now. Everybody's like, okay, you know what? By by Matt Rule year one standards, we're doing okay. There's some stuff he's made some changes with that have had an impact. One of the things that has had an impact is sitting Sims and starting Harburg and not turning the ball over. And by virtue of that fact, I mean, all three wins have come with Harburg. And and Jeff Sims getting hurt. You don't want to ever see anybody get hurt. It was a blessing in disguise. I totally kicked the camera, by the way. Do I need to move? No, I think you're good. You're good. I'll come over here. Um, I don't want to call it a blessing in disguise, but it... I think the I think the turnover factor would have played in at some point. And, and Nebraska's got Nebraska's gone three and one since they started Harburg. And that one loss is against arguably the best team in the yeah. country. Nebraska so, was not going to beat Michigan. No. They weren't even going to come close. Nobody's going to come close to Michigan within the Big Ten except maybe Ohio State, and even then I'm not sure. I think that's a two-score win for Michigan. Um, my point with this is, is when you start looking at fixing certain things, fixing turnovers brought Nebraska back to 3-1 and one Yeah, in that time frame. Col- it- Colorado, I think, is still a tough team to beat because – Colorado does have some really good athletes. Colorado does have the ability to score. I mean, Colorado's done some good things the last few weeks. I mean, they they, they took USC to the wire at the well, beat Arizona State on a last second field goal. Last yeah, game. I mean, they've done some okay things. If I mean, nobody's paying attention to Colorado anymore, or at least as much. People are going to look back and go like. Okay, yeah, you know what? Dion did a pretty freaking good job here in year one. I don't know what's going to happen after this year, but they're they're at what four wins, five wins? What four wins, right? Uh, yeah, they're four and yeah. two, and their two losses are against a couple of really good football. O- Oregon teams. and USC. Yeah, that's a couple of really good football teams. Right now, Colorado's doing pretty damn solid. Dion so Sanders might be the national coach of the year. He could so. But that's my point. I'm kind of I'm going to throw that one out there. But I think Nebraska, if you eliminate turnovers or even limit turnovers, they're four and two right now. Yes. If you were Nebraska, six. If you were going to talk to any Husker fan out there and say, "Hey, this season, six games in, you're four and two. Most of them are done. I'm taking it. I'm ecstatic with that. The rule hires a slam dunk. Let's roll. Okay, they're one quarterback's difference away from, from, from doing that. And so that's the thing that frustrates me when people look at the situation and they're a little upset about the fact, hey, Trav, Trav. Sorry, I'm, I'm signaling Travis here. Um but this is a situation where you hear Husker fans, com- I mean, talking about the difference between Sims and Harburg, and I think the biggest difference has been the fact that you've, el- not completely, but you, you've limited turnovers to a marginal extent that it's you, it hasn't had the effect on games that it did that first two weeks. Now, again, I think the Colorado game's a little bit of a throwout just because I do think Colorado's a pretty good team. They've got the players to beat you. I think is a very good quarterback. I, th- I think Travis Hunter, when he doesn't have a lacerated liver, is an outstanding football player. They had a huge upgrade on the offensive line. That's a team that's going to do some damage again as the season goes along. And if they keep doing that, I, w- I think we're going to look back and say, hey, I mean, it's nobody looks at a loss and says, well, that's a good loss or an acceptable loss. I mean, when you look at a Michigan, I think people are going to say like, hey, there's no way we were going to beat Michigan, and there's a degree of acceptability there. I think Colorado, nowhere near as close as Michigan, but I do think there's a little bit of a degree of acceptability there that Colorado's an okay loss. Nebraska would have beat Minnesota 
if they had gone into the season with Harburg as the starting quarterback. I, I don't disagree with you. And that's that's the different that's, yeah, that's the I one mean, game. The, and that's the thing. And but I mean that game makes a huge difference in terms of how I think people look at this team and they go three and three, yeah, we're okay. I mean, it's God, you've got three wins. God, that Illinois win was really ugly. Nebraska pulls off that win against Minnesota. They don't have you remove any two of the turnovers they had. Nebraska wins that game. And we're sitting here going, okay. We're we're going like oh my god in year one with rule we're four and two and people are going to be would, would be ecstatic with that and then we're looking at the rest of the schedule finding two wins seems a hell of a lot easier than finding three wins I I, I don't disagree but with I that. now but I will say where we're at now you look at the schedule. I worry about Iowa. I worry about Wisconsin. I definitely worry about Maryland. But then I look at Michigan State, Purdue, and Northwestern, and, I, and I'm just like, God, if the ball doesn't bounce our way, we could lose any of those three games as that, well. That's too. a good way to put it, is that I think Nebraska is better than Purdue, Northwestern, and Michigan State. However, you if get the, the – I think the, Nebraska is better than Illinois if the ball bounces our way, and it did and it Friday did. night. Hey, there are a lot of great deals at Husker Hounds. All of October, house flags are 25% off. Same for ceramic game day party trays, travel mugs. Halloween is just around the corner, so pick up a girl's cheerleader costume or a football jersey, both 25% off. And when you purchase a Halloween costume, you get free pom-poms. Two locations in the Omaha area, the Superstore at 84th and Center and out west at 171st in Lakeside Hills Plaza. Or you can make it easy on yourself. Just go to uh, huskerhounds.com and get free shipping on orders over $50 and a flat shipping rate of $4.95 on anything and, under $50. And Scott will usually, they will usually honor any deal they've got going. They will honor it online as well, too. So here's the deal. Um, we were talking about the West Division and how bad it is. Next year, of course, the divisions go away. Earlier or late last week, the Big Ten announced the future Big Ten opponents for for Nebraska from 2024 through 2028. There were some mixed reactions on this. You and I have gone through this. I don't think the Big Ten was did I, I I'm fine with the schedule. I, I like, saw I saw a handful of people on social media talking about, oh my God, the Big Ten hates Nebraska. I I gotta be honest with you. I really thought they gave us a pretty favorable schedule over the next five years. I do. I mean, when you look at it this way, you play Michigan State twice, you play Ohio State three times, you play Oregon twice, Penn State twice. You play UCLA three times, USC three times, Washington twice. You play Michigan twice. You're going to get some – the only team you play all five is, is Iowa because that's the protected rivalry. But, yeah, which but when, I – I mean, it, you play everybody two to three times. And, and here's, here's the difference. The SEC has an eight-game schedule, conference schedule. The Big Ten has a nine-game. No matter how you dice this thing up, you're going to have years that are just a bitch. And I don't, I don't think Nebraska got a bitch here in here. I, I think. The, I think the hard of, part is everybody's looking at this, at, at, at where some of these teams stand now. If Nebraska gets better, like people think it's going to, is it really that bitch of a schedule? No. And then I think you've got some of these other teams. I mean, it's everybody sits around and looks at schedules, and I, I mean, okay, so we were talking wrestling earlier, yeah. You go to a tournament, that bracket comes out, you look at it, and you're like, oh my God, I totally got shafted on, on this bracket in terms of who, which side of the bracket I'm on, who I got to wrestle. It's the same thing with this. Okay, go be that team that people don't want to play against. That solves all your problems. And that's what Nebraska wants to do. That's a good thing. I And, and it's I look at the schedule, when you look at that Per, like like the the the, the breakdown of uh, of Nebraska's Big Ten opponents here, they play everybody except Iowa because that again the protected rivalry yeah. thing. They play everybody two to three times. Okay, I mean how unfair is that? It's not. It's not. And by the way, You're how cool playing. is it that you see next year UCLA, USC, and Ohio State on a schedule? But that's the thing is when I look at schedules like this, 
and I look at going to home games, you want to see teams that... What are sports? I brought this up last night. What are sports? They're entertainment. That's yeah. all it is. And you know what? This entertains me. Guess, do you know what doesn't entertain me right now? La Tech. Indiana. Yeah. Illinois. Northwestern. Do you know what is entertaining? Dude, I want to see a game against UCLA. I want to see USC. I want to see Oregon. I want to see Washington. I want to see Michigan. I want to see Ohio State. Because I want to see a good Iowa team. And, and I actually think Ohio State, Michigan... And those teams say they want to see Nebraska because Blue Bloods want to hang out with Blue Bloods. Yeah. They really, I mean, if, if Nebraska well, wants to call itself a Blue we, Blood program, you want to play Blue Bloods because you yeah. want to be part of that tradition we and that were, history. We were talking about this before the game, and I made the point that one of the, one of the most fun years I had at Nebraska was my senior year because we played, a, at the time, a very solid Texas Tech team. We played UCLA. We played a very good West Virginia team. Yeah. I I mean, our non conference schedule was excellent. Those are the teams you want to play. I mean, the team, the games that were fun, night games against Colorado, that was a lot of fun. Day after Thanksgiving against Oklahoma, when Oklahoma was really good, that was a lot of fun. I mean, these games Going are where like Fox play, Big Noon Sunday or Big Noon Saturday and in college game day show up. That's what these games are. Yeah, I'm playing a mediocre team, playing a mediocre Missouri team. Who cares? Mediocre Kansas. Who cares? Yeah. Although two of the four years we played Kansas, they were ranked in the top <laughs> ten. Um, which on the flip side, we lost to like a 76th ranked Iowa State team. So I still can't bitch about those guys. But um, when you look at the schedule, I think it's really fair. I just I look at that and I think if you're a Nebraska fan, you want to see Oregon, you want to see Washington, you want to see US, USC, you want to see UCLA. You want to see those teams on your schedule. And, and I mean, like, like, what's the point otherwise? I, I don't get it. I don't, being, I don't get being upset about that. I understand the fact that you look at, okay, well, Ohio State seems like they got an easier schedule than us. Okay, well, get better and go. just go beat everybody on your schedule. By the way, that schedule and these schedules, and it goes for every Big Ten team, these schedules get you into a playoff in an expanded playoff to 12 teams. Well, and that's the thing here. I mean, the other thing you and I talked about before we went on air today was the unavoidability of it within – the, the mega conferences. Yeah. And when you look at what the SEC is turning into and what the Big Ten is turning into, where you're going to have a Big Ten that has Michigan, Ohio State, UCLA, USC, Oregon, Washington, Penn State, hopefully Nebraska's in that conversation. You can't avoid everybody. When you have six, seven, eight really good teams in these big conferences, you're going to have to play three of them every single year. I Look, mean, I mean you, and it's the same thing with the, with the SEC, especially with, yeah, go, the, go to the, the West Division. Yeah. Okay, and, and let's not forget, they're adding Texas and Oklahoma next week or next year. The West Division, Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, A&M, Auburn, Mississippi State, and Arkansas. That's the West Division. That's like Mississippi State and Arkansas are like the only "quote unquote" gimme games there within that conference. If you're a conference team, it's the bottom two. Everybody else is going to be a yeah. is, is going to be is going to be a bar fight. The East Division: Georgia, Kentucky, which is five and one; Florida, Missouri, Tennessee, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. The East and the Southeast is the easiest of the divisions, but that's not an easy division. There's there's two one maybe two teams in both divisions that are gimmies. Everybody every, I mean literally every other team you mentioned is going to be a dogfight yeah. for everybody. I, I'm just saying celebrate the schedule because these schedules make college football awesome. It, it does, and it's going to be really interesting going forward in the Big Ten when you remove those divisions. You're gonna have to play the good teams. You are. That that's how you're gonna win. That's how you're gonna win and finish in that top two. Um, you got time for questions? Right, we got some questions. Uh, this- I love 
questions. By the way, what you, you're drinking another Arkansas beer. This is uh, it, it is uh, drink beer, do good. So it's ours, Ozark Beer Company. Okay. So I got the Amarillo by morning. So this is their American Pale Ale. Okay. Which uh, kind of cool benefits the art the the Northwest Arkansas Food Bank. Amarillo by morning. Don't you sing that song, Owen? Don't you do a cover of that? As he opens one, he's not even going to answer it. Did you get him one? Yeah, I actually grabbed one myself. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, I do I do sing that song uh, from time to time. Yeah, Amarillo by morning. Yeah. Well, George Strait. Love George. Jorge. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to brag on my son now. But, you know, I mean, how you watch your – Owen does the best cover, maybe the best version of Eddie Rabbit's Driving My Life Away. It's really good. If you ever want to go, I have not heard Owen do that. I oh, it's love really that good. Song, by it's the way. really good. Really good. Uh, this is from Eugene. Eugene says, Doc, what is the right amount of practice and rest time during an off week without losing focus? Um, I think it kind of depends on what time during the season that bye week hits. If it's early, I actually think you do, I think you kind of hit it hard. If it's early in the year, you get after it. Is it, but we're not early in the year. We're midway through. Yeah, we, so and that's the thing. I mean, because you get some of those teams that get get that bye week in the last month of the season, which is within that last four games. If your bye week falls really late, that's when you do that. Okay, we're going to rest up, work some conditioning, get some guys healed up, fine tune a few things. It's it, it's it's sort of a rest period. That early season one, I do think you get after it. The, these middle of the season ones where that bye week, I mean, this is literally the halfway point of the season. Six games in, six to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I'm a coach, I'm going to probably take the guys I have that are healthy, and I am going to hit work pretty hard. I'm probably going to take two, three days. I'm going live. There's going to be a lot of hitting, a lot of full speed full padded stuff because they're going to get the weekend off yeah you're going to get after it for about two three days and really get after it if i've got anybody who's injured at all i don't care if it's even just a mild ding i'm holding them out we're going to get those guys healed up but for about two or three days boy i'm strapping it on and we're getting after it the next two or three days we're going to hit the conditioning hard but we're going to really limit the hitting then that next two or three days, and then you're going to give guys a couple of days off. Uh, Darren says, aside from a Husker win, Texas and Notre Dame losses bring me joy. Are there teams <laughs> y'all uh, enjoy getting beat? He he nailed it right there for me, Texas and Notre Dame. I I would have loved to seen Arizona State pull the upset. Um that that one would have been that that one would have been interesting. I I was pulling for Ohio State against Maryland. Actually, I, I, I wanted to see Ohio. State. I don't really have a hate. You know, I'm so desensitized to a lot of stuff. I know, and that's just from years of here. Keep, you keep talking. I'm going to pull a Trav here. Okay, yeah, duck and do go underneath the cameras or go around them. Look at him, just walk right through him. Can you I'm believe that standing. guy? Just has no courtesy whatsoever to the viewers. Just uh, puts his big body in front of him. It, it's interesting when it when it comes to hating a team or not wanting somebody to win. I'm so desensitized because for years, you know, you you separate when you're working in the media any emotion from it. I know that sounds really weird. I know you got uh, Omaha sports guys who still wear the the red coat. I never did that, right? I, I was never never wore red to a game. I never did that when I was covering because I thought I had an obligation to be a non biased spectator. And a lot of people are going, Travis, you were always biased and and you hated him on on, on sound off. That's not true. Uh, I I, I love Frank Solich, and I still think Frank Solich got the biggest raw deal by Steve Peterson. Go back and watch the tape. I was a big supporter of Frank Solich. But over 30-some years of covering games, you just showed up going who, what, when, where, why, and how, and just tell the story and to move on to the next game. I, I don't have a hatred towards any one team. So when it comes to teams that, that, that may get beat, uh, I go, oh, all I care about, was it a good game? I just want to be entertained anymore. And that's why I said earlier to Rob, I said, sports are entertainment. And I want to be entertained. If I'm not entertained, then it's just, it's just, it's boring to me. I want to be entertained. I want to sit there. If I'm going to spend three, 
three and a half, four hours watching a game. I want to enjoy it. Uh, uh, you know, Owen was up till one thirty in the morning last night watching the Arizona State Colorado game. It was entertaining. And that was enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Y- you were entertained. I mean, I y- you don't watch a lot of college football. I'm, I don't. I'm think. not an. Ex- I'm not a huge sports fan in general. Yeah, I but that I can watch college football for sure. But that game was a good college football game. Yeah. Okay, and that's a perfect example of what we're talking yes. about. Take somebody like Owen, and if you can get something that's halfway compelling. In a triple overtime game where you've got a top 10 team against an unranked team, that's a little compelling. People are going to want to watch that. Let's have that. But here's the thing to be able to get that, you got to get a bunch of good teams on a schedule. And you've got to play solid teams week in and week out for that type of thing to happen. And that's how you grow the sport. So I'm, it, it's one of those, I, I don't think Nebraska, rem, if anything, I look at Nebraska's Big Ten schedule over the next five years, I don't think we, I don't think we got the easy route, but man, we definitely did not get hammered here at all. I think it's, a, I think they're all solid schedules. If anything, I'd like to see one more good, compelling team each year. Uh, Krillin says, and I'm skipping a, a bunch of stuff he wrote, uh, but his question is this, is Nebraska trading biting, clawing, and scrapping for four to five extra wins this year against a very weak schedule to go five and seven or six and six or six and six to a, to- a all told in exchange for two or three, uh, more losses next year. It's doing things differently than he's done elsewhere. He's talking about rule compromising his principles because you've brought it up where, you know, he, he's helping these seniors out. Those guys that stuck around and said, hey, they want to win uh, and completely committing to throwing in younger players to grow up fast, namely on offense, uh, going to fail to develop the guys needed to expect uh, Rule to take a, a, a step forward in the next year or two. Okay, that's kind of an interesting question. I um, Listen, Bill Callahan did that shit, and it was a bad deal. He, he made his guys – fit a square peg in a round hole, and that ended Nebraska's yeah, consecutive winning. Yeah, but I'm not sure winning. this is the same. I, I don't know if that's the same question. I think what he's asking is, I, I mean, I, I mean, in a way it is. I, I think the question is, is do you, do, you, do you jettison some of these juniors and seniors right now? So let's, so I the, think the seniors I think, and juniors are pretty good, though. I think they're the best we got. My question would be on the offensive line with guys like Gatula and Sledge. I'd be curious to see how those guys do. Um, but they're true freshmen. I mean, I think Rule's looking at guys like that and going, okay, let's get a redshirt year under them and get these guys a little bit more development before we throw them out there. And yeah. Let's preserve that redshirt. Yeah. Um, That's building long-term, isn't it? It it really is. I I don't know if he's truly doing things all that differently. And I do think he's looking at this in the sense of the guys that are in Lincoln right now. I know for a fact these are not, quote-unquote, Matt Rule's guys. There's going to be some roster change up. I, I think Rule wanted to come in. There's I, I call it right way. There's a right way to switch over a roster, and there's a wrong way to do it. Um, By the way, many people said Dion did it the wrong way. He did it the right way for Colorado. It's different for every okay, program. I mean, the, the end result worked. I'm still going to say Dion did it the wrong way. The right way to do it is you come in and you go talk to the guys and say, hey, listen, here's the deal. You're not going to be a long-term option for us here right now. I can't use you. At the same time, we'll help you find a landing spot. Let's work that out. That's the right way to do it. The wrong way to do it is come in and in a public meeting, you got cameras rolling. You post it. You post it all over the internet. You come in and say, "Hey, I'm bringing my own baggage, and it's Louie. But that's Dion. That's a fucking wrong way to do it. I get it that it's Dion, but you're basically walking in and saying, "Hey, you guys <laughs> suck ass. We're gonna bring in 
much better. And I get it. Travis Hunter, yeah, he's better. Better. Shadur Sanders is better. Half of that offensive line is better. I don't disagree with him. I'm not saying he's not speaking the truth. I'm just saying you don't have to be a freaking dickhead about it. I, I And can we agree on this? When Matt Rule took over at Temple, and Be- you're not comparing apples to oranges. And what I mean is, it, it, and you just said it, Nebraska's upperclassmen are probably the best you have right now. So you, if Matt Rule would have had really good upperclassmen at Baylor and Temple, probably would have played him to help win. He, he just put himself... You do yeah, an evaluation. I yeah, I think he's playing the guys he's got because he's looking at him going like, okay, this is all I got. Yeah. It really is. And I, and I do think you're going to ultimately see a roster changeover. There was a – it was way more subtle than people notice. Okay, that was like the biggest – Was it a grammatical well, error? No, it was just it, – it was the it was, that was the biggest redundancy I could have said. It was <laughs> – it was the biggest, like, like people didn't notice it because they didn't notice it. <laughs> this is essentially what I said right there. Um, there was a little bit of a roster changeover that people didn't notice, and it, it, it's because Rule did it kind of, in my opinion, kind of did it quietly and was just like, hey, I don't, I don't see a fitting in. I, I think people, Casey Thompson is the most visible aspect of that. I don't think Rule sat Casey Thompson down and said, you suck ass. I got Louis Vuitton over here and Jeff Sims. Why don't you get out of here? I think Rule sat Casey Thompson down and said, hey, I'm going to bring in another guy because you're coming off of a shoulder injury. I got to hedge my bet. And I got to hedge my bet. And I don't know how you're going to be until August. But right now, I'm putting my bag, or I'm putting, I'm, I'm, I'm putting all my money in, in the Heinrich Harburg Jeff Sims basket, and I'm going with that because I don't know what you're going to be able to do until we see you in August. That being said, right now you're not my major, you're not my main priority. And I think Casey Thompson was like, okay, I totally get that. I'm going to go someplace else where I know I'm going to be the starter. And he did. And he's been, well, he's been Casey Thompson there. At Florida Atlantic. Yeah, he's been very Casey Thompson-esque. You know, I swore when we started today, Rob, I go, you know what? It's an off week. We did a show Friday night. We're going to get this podcast done in like and, twenty minutes, and, and, and no, I thought we—I thought we go forty-five minutes to fifty. Well, we're an hour and twelve minutes in, so you know we're, we're back on, on on regular time, which is which is good. You there know, there is always something to talk about. Anyway, looking forward with Matt Rule and this team to answer that question, you're going to see continued roster turnover. Now, that's a that's a fact of college football yes. going forward for all teams. That's not just unique to Nebraska with Matt rule as a first slash second year head coach. That's everywhere right now. It's, it's the nature of the business of college football, but I do think you're going to see a pretty big roster changeover from this year to next year. And I think you're going to see that roster changeover happen again from year two to year three with Matt rule. He is going to get his, quote-unquote, his guys here. You're looking up uh, Casey Thompson, right? Yeah. Got some stats? Uh, well, he's not, even the, he's not even the starting quarterback anymore. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, it looks like Daniel Richardson is now the starting quarterback. Uh, well, it's kind of weird. He, he, Daniel Richardson leads the, the, the team in passing. Casey Thompson has 50 completions. On 79 attempts, Richardson has 66 completions on 111. Uh, Actually, you know, Casey Thompson's – and he may be injured. I don't follow Florida Atlantic football. I don't. I've got no idea. Casey does have five touchdowns, but he's got five picks too. So, Which, I mean, and and that's the thing. As good as Casey Thompson looked for Nebraska last year, he had a stud-wide receiver. That helped a lot. Um. I just, I, I mean, there's a reason he left Texas. Yeah. 
Well, and that's the thing about the portal, right? Is you can get all excited about the portal, and I think there's going to be, and you'll have a better idea in three, four, five years of how good the portal really is. Yeah, I and, mean, and, I think this will stabilize you, a lot. You're, you're right in that some people leave under a certain circumstance, like Michigan State. A lot of players are going to leave Michigan State. Yeah. But you also have guys that transfer in, and you're like, well, there's a reason you didn't make it Ohio State. There's a reason you didn't make it at Michigan. There's a reason you didn't oh, make it and, somewhere. And I'm the guy that I'm like, I mean, the thing that always cracks me up is people getting really excited about the, hey, we got a former five-star kid from Ohio State, or we just signed a former five-star kid from Georgia. I have zero excitement about that because I'm sitting there going, you didn't pan out where you were at. So there you go. You know, we've talked about it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because coming up on Wednesday night, you can watch the best college football show on the internet that is just starting to get heard of. And that's Behind the Point Spread with Dr. Rob Zadiska, myself, and Scott Spritzer out of Las Vegas. It's presented by Betfred Sports. Uh, the show is Wednesday during the college football season, live on YouTube. We break down the, the big games in college football. Even though Nebraska's not playing this week, we're still going to do uh, the show. So make sure to check it out. It's a live call-in show. You're it able is to a great it, college and, football and, show. And Scott, we talk about everything. Scott gives us a metric each and every week to think about. And if you want to know how important turnovers are, go back, I think, to week three. He really goes into the turnover margin and what it means uh, to wins and losses. Um, so that's coming up Wednesday night at 8 o'clock live on the YouTube channel, so make sure to subscribe. Big thanks to Husker Max for distributing this podcast. Head to HuskerMax.com for the latest news and opinion from a variety of voices. If you have a question for Dr. Rob, you can always send it to DocTalkSports at gmail.com. Last couple of weeks, we've been reading a lot more of those questions, so we, uh, we're we hearing we'll keep, you. We'll keep after. I do try to keep up on Twitter yes. as well. And so you can follow me questions on Twitter. I'll do my best. At DocTalkSports is where you can find Dr. Rob on Twitter. You can find me at Travis Create. Like the Doc Talk Sports Facebook page, and of course, give us a follow on the old TikTok, the old TikTok, the Tiki Talk. For producer, director, Owen Justice, for Dr. Rob Zadiska, I'm Travis Justice. We'll talk to you uh, next week on the Doc Talk Podcast presented by Betfred Sports.